I'm Rhoda. Welcome to my channel. Today's workout is a metabolic conditioning workout, a Metcon. We'll combine three different training techniques, PHA, combination, and low impact cardio to get your heart rate into a fat burning zone while we build lean muscle. So you'll burn a lot of fat and calories during this workout and the benefit is we're going to build that lean muscle which will increase your metabolism over time. So you'll burn more calories at rest. If that's a type of workout that appeals to you, please subscribe to my channel. There's never a cost to subscribe and you help me keep your fitness free on YouTube. Are you ready? Let's go. I'm glad you're here. Let's go. Swing the arms, knees up. Big movements. Flex these muscles. Just bring the knees up in front and twist. Engage those lower abs and hit the total full body today. We have three training techniques for this metabolic conditioning workout. First is PHA, peripheral heart action. Arms all the way back here. We'll take an upper body move. We'll do it for 40 seconds, transitioning to a lower body move, back to the upper body, and then back to the lower body, no rest. What that does, it's going to get that heart rate into a fat burning zone because that heart has to pump blood to the upper body, then the lower body, then the upper body. It gets confused. So we burn fat while we build lean muscle. And then we'll take those two moves, second training technique, we'll combine them, compound movement. We'll do a lot of body parts at the same time while we're doing strength. It causes all those muscles to need oxygen. So of course, the heart rate's going to go up a little bit higher. And then we'll take a little rest and we'll do a cardio blast. Bump that heart rate up one more notch, okay? I'm gonna start with my medium weights. I'm gonna do a shoulder row, high row, into a deadlift. So get ready, here we go. Row it up. Now I'm keeping my feet in a wide stance versus what we call a staggered stance right there because I'm gonna transition right into a deadlift without rest. So I wanna be able to go right down into that deadlift on the upper body here, form, leave with your elbows. I see this a lot with my clients, turning the wrists. You wanna just hold that weight, neutral wrist, using the shoulder to lift. Hold your core tight, belly button into the spine while you're breathing. Takes practice. Get ready for those deadlifts. Nice flat back, weight stays very close to the body, think about weight in your heels. So as I come down in this deadlift, I can lift my toes literally off the floor in my, in my sneakers because I am driving through my heels the whole time. Driving the hips back with a flat back, slight bend in my knees, up hips forward, squeeze glutes. That squeeze right here, just a little extra bang for your butt, make those glutes work. Now it up. Two more seconds here. I'm going to transition right back into that shoulder row. Last deadlift, bring it up, here we go. Pull it up, remember, neutral wrist. Move with the elbows, make the top of the shoulder, lift this weight. When we are doing these moves for a little while, right? So we're going 40 seconds, back and forth, and then we're going to combine them. So pace yourself, take it slow, don't do these too quickly. A medium weight is fine here because of the high reps. And with high reps, we get really good muscle toning. And that's what we want, right? We want to lean and tone. One more. Into your deadlift, ready? Remember the cues. Weight in the heels, come on up. Squeeze the glutes, hips forward. Hips back, hips forward. Flat back, slight bend in those knees, and up. We do have a 10 second rest. After this, before we combine them, and maybe you can see how the combination works. We'll do that row as we come up out of the deadlift. Now, check your breathing. You Look, your heart rate's up a little bit. And make note of that. And then we'll check it after our combination. You'll feel it up a little bit higher. And take a little breather here. And the benefit of these little tiny breaks 
heart rate comes down a little bit, and now we're going to bounce it up. So we get that hip effect. We're ready? Here we go. High intensity interval. Pull it up. As the weight goes down, deadlift. Come up, pull it up. High intensity interval training is where you bring your heart rate up, let it come down, bring it back up. So up and down we go through the whole workout. Getting the benefit of that high heart rate throughout the whole workout. That's the cool part about it. You can take the rest because just the heart having to rework again, bring that heart rate back up. You're getting as if you were out keeping the heart rate at that high rate the whole time, say up running. And rest. Okay, putting the weight down onto our cardio. It's a fun one. If you've been around exercise a while, old school aerobic type. We're gonna do a hamstring curl, pulling that leg up and back, working that hamstring, arms forward and back, working the chest and back. Get ready, right leg first. Here we go. Pull. Now this is a long cardio interval. I want you to get the heart rate up. I want you to work really hard. I want you to try to go as long as you can in this 40 seconds. If you need to rest at 20 or 30, that is fine. If you're new, you probably will need to rest. Totally okay. And next time, you'll get to go a little further. The time after that, a little further more. It's pretty fun to watch someone start to exercise. And they're amazed at how quickly they advance. and get stronger and more conditioned. And rest. Okay. 30 second rest as we move on to our second peripheral part. I'm going to go with my knee weight in. It's a bicep curl and a rear lunge. I know. I don't love lunges either, but that's okay. <laughs> we should do them. They're great for the lower body. So bicep curl, elbows in, and then we'll go alternating, stepping back to a rear lunge, or you can do a rear leg lift if the bending is just too much. Okay. Here we go. Pull it up and down. The key here is elbows right in at the waist. Neutral wrists. Again, see this, curling them in. You don't need to do that, and it actually gives a little bit of hyperextension on your wrist. You don't want that. It's not worth it getting your wrist injured while you're making your muscles pretty. Nice and slow here. We got plenty of time. Transition to that alternating rear lunge or alternating rear leg lift. Stand to the side so I don't hit that fireplace. And here we go. So it's back and up. Shoulders stamp over the hips here. Think about the back of you doing the work of bringing you down while we keep the weight in that back toe. So we keep it out of that front heel. You can modify it. Leg raise, leg raise. Do it at the same pace that we're doing these row lunges. Couple more, come on. Sounds a hard one for me. Ready for curls. Here we go. Back to the curls, upper body. Feel the heart start to work. Start to work. What am I saying? It's been working, right? You can really start to feel it increase the respiration, right? Breathing heavy. That blood needs oxygen. The heart is asking those lungs to get the oxygen. So the heart can mix it in with the blood and send it to your muscles. Two more seconds here. Ready for those real lunges. Alrighty, here we go. Shoulders up. Keep your eyes looking out in front of you versus down at your toes because when you look down at your toes, you naturally pull your weight forward. You want the weight to stay back over the hips. And then do that front heel as you stand. Make sure you're feeling this. You ready for that rest? A little 10 second rest in the half? I am. And then rest. Whew. Okay. So we are going to do a rear lunge, come up, do our curl at the top. Just 
Gives us a little more rest. Ready? Right leg. So it's a real lunge. Come on up. Curl the way. I'm be real careful not to hit my fireplace here. Right at the front of my mat. Maybe got a little bit bigger just now in your living room. I have clients send me photos of my videos playing on their big TVs. It's kind of weird. I appreciate seeing that and knowing you're working hard. I just see me filling your living room with something. I love that I can. I love that I can bring this to as many women as I possibly can. Because I want you to be strong, lean, and cardio conditioned well into your senior years. So that's what this channel is all about. All right, we have a jack to a kick. Jack, kick, ready? Here we go, tap it out. In, so this is a low jack. If you truly wanted to add a higher jack there, you can, but I'm gonna stick right here because low impact is safer on joints, better for everyone, especially if you're over 40, you wanna protect those joints. One more, come on, finish it, there we go. All right, work time. I hope you have water. As you can see, I forgot my water. But that's all right, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna drink some water. I want you to drink water between these circuits, okay? I think I'm gonna go lightweight here. This is a long lever move. Okay, we're going to pull the weight together, and then you swing through, come up, open, close, and then we'll go into a wide squat. Ready? Here we go. Bring it down. Sit back on the heels, even though you're hinging forward. Flat back, hinge from the waist. But drive those hips back. Weight in your heels. Feel the weight in your heels. You're bending the knees a little bit if you can. But if that hurts, you can do this with a hinge. So get this upper body. And the lower body too. You'll feel those glutes and those legs work with the hinge. Good. Toes wide. On and up. Squeeze at the top. Now, if doing squats and lunges is not possible on your knees, try a little bend here and up. I can almost guarantee you're not going to feel this in your knees. Because of the position of the feet and how we're doing this move. Activate, stamp. Activate, stamp. That's your move. Get as deep as you can. Don't go further than where it feels good. Here we go. Hinge down, up, and then close. Relax your shoulders. Just felt mine kind of crunch up around my knees. My knees right in my ears. That looks like this. Up, out. Don't do that. Your shoulders will want to help your chest and back here. When your neck gets involved, then we can have some problems. We want this to be chest and back. How's your breathing? Feel it? Good. Into those wide squats. Toes out. Down and up. Or activate and stand. Activate and stand. Good. Keep going. Come on. Rest is coming. A little rest. Pause. <laughs> 10 second pause before we combine this. Now take that swing cue out and do the front raise. To the open close, cross, high and cross. And then back down. Alright, so it looks gonna look like this. You're gonna hold your weights facing each other. Now squat as you stand. Weight up, out, 
in, squat, don't swing. Here we go. Squat down, lift, open, close. Squat down, keep those shoulders up here, not hinging forward. I really like this combination. It's a lot going on. Large muscles of the upper body, even though we're using these light weights. The weight is far away from the chest and back muscles that are doing the work. So gravity is pulling on those arms. Physics, you study physics at all, you know that that makes that weight heavier. You know, five pounds of these are much heavier. Okay, weight goes down. My favorite cardio is nice big skater. We're gonna step to the right first. Big arms. If you want to make this high impact, you can jump it. I'm going to stay with the low. Here we go. Big swing in the arms. And I would suggest you're thinking high impact right now. If you've been exercising for a while and ready for that, but I want you to limit your high impact work, okay? No more than a couple days a week. If you're a runner and you don't run on a regular basis, you really should be doing low impact during your workouts. Getting enough impact with that running, and I should know because I did that high impact in my 40s and my 50s, and now I haven't had a back brace on today because of it. So I don't want that for you. All right, wherever you started, whether it's at 40, 50, 60, protect your joints. It really does matter. It really does. Okay. I'm going to challenge myself with my heavy weight, all right? Your overhead tricep extension will use behind your head. Elbows forward towards me. Lift, now lower, and then we're going to hold the weight here. Alternating curtsy lunge, or you're going to step back, okay? Here we go. Ready? Press. Now, abs are tight here. I, I automatically go into that staggered stance because I like it. You need to be able to transition right into that curtsy. I'm going now with my wide stance, those feet under the hip. And I bet you're feeling this. If you're using a heavy weight, if you're using a light weight, maybe that's all you have, that's fine. But you might notice you could do more weight. And if you are noticing that, I want you to get a little more weight, okay? Right, the last one, bring it down, curtsy, right leg. Heavier weight is not going to make you bulky. I lift heavier weight. I'm not big muscle strapping down bodybuilder or anything. The thing with heavier weights, as long as it's not you know, 40 or 50 pounds for women, is you're just going to get leaner muscles faster. And I think you'll agree that's a good thing. You're not going to get big muscles. She were really doing super heavy weight, super low reps, and that's just not what we do on this channel. All right, ready? Elbows towards me. Press it up, triangle back your neck here. Abs are tight, it's gonna help. Get your weight belt around the middle. Get a little extra weight belt with this wrapped on back brace. Keep going. Come on. Should start to get heavy. Yellow back your arms. One arm might be more tired than the other. It's probably your less dominant arm. Go down. Here we go. Curtsy. If you're not curtsying, you're coming back. You can feel that glute engage on that front foot. As low as you can, though, keep you go. Obviously, it's where you go in the muscle. It's not worth it. It's going to hurt you. Because with your work in the modification range, you're going to get stronger. And slowly, hopefully, your joint will be a little bit more protected by your muscles. And you'll be able to have more mobility in the joint. And we'll still get 10 seconds. Pause. As we come up out of this curtsy, as we come up to standing, we're going to press the weight up. 
Do a curtsy. You ready? Curtsy. Press. Tricep. As the weight comes down, curtsy the other side. Push them up, press. One of my favorite combinations right here. I love curtsy lunges, isn't that weird? I don't love other lunges. Always like working the triceps. Back to four. Back on my own gyms. I have no doubt there are lots of different terms for these triceps. I happen to be by my first gym was by school. We're in rest, right? Way down. I was by school, so I have lots of teachers. They call the teacher's arm. <laughs> They're like this. I'm writing on the, the board. That moves, now, it's called gravity. Push it out here, just like that, ready? Right foot first, deep breath. There we go, gravity and skin. So, as you get older, gravity's been working on that area for a long time. So, toning those muscles up, making them strong, doesn't necessarily take away all of that gravity result of all your years but it will make it less evident. I'll show you as soon as we're done here because I'll have it too. See my videos and I think, oh, wish I could get rid of that skin. But it's there. And my arms in general look good. But see? So if you're seeing that, I have it too. What you want to see when you go like this is nice firm muscles. That means they're as tall as they can be and they're pulling that skin in. So that's a good thing. Okay, let's grab one heavy weight. We are going to a, now we're going to go, sorry, two heavy weights, a back row. So, I'm going to be down, pull. Okay, ready? Come down in that deadlift position. Abs are tight. Pull, release, pull, release. And combine this with a front lunge. Or a front kick. Front lunge is too challenging because of joint issues. I'm squeezing my shoulder blades at the top here, pulling the weight back towards my hips, not straight up. Okay, so check yourself there. That's a common form mistake to pull these rows like this versus back. One more. Let's set up with that front lunge. You're going to step out. Ready? Step out. Push out on the front knee on the other side. Step out. Now, still, the back knee, the bend in the back knee makes this lunge happen. Don't bend the back knee. It doesn't work, right? Or your kick, release, kick, release. You start to body. That's where I want you to go. Go to the kicks. Try and keep moving. Because 
Eating. All right. Frog lunge. Point goes down. Pull it up. Keep the weights up here. So it's front and pull. Sorry, my cue is not very good. Now, ten seconds is a lot of time. I like my weight. It's holding it up here. Now my chest. So we call it isometric hold. Nothing's happening, but the muscles are working. Right here. I'm looking forward to looking at my heart rate after this one. I can feel it. And rest. All right. Put up your heart. See where I'm at. About 30. Explain how heart rate works. Now, if we talk about this cardio, jack, crunch this time. Jack, crunch. Ready or not? Here we go. Out, crunch. So how do you pick up your heart rate? I'm going to do it like this under each of my videos. I think I'll do that moving forward. The number 220. Subtract your age. Now you have a number unique to you and your age. Multiply that number by 0.65. It's 65% of your max heart rate. That's the low end of your cardio zone. Same number, 20 minus your age, multiply by 85, 0.85 for 85%. So that's going to give you a range, right? 65 to 85% of your max heart rate. That's where the magic happens. That's where the fat gets burned. Cardio. You're on the lower end of that, like I was, 130 for me. That is the place where I burn the most fat. So, Come down your mat. Grab weight from chest press. I'm going heavy here. Okay. Hips are down. Feet are right by the thumb. Find a bar. Press. Release. I'm going to go into a glute bridge after this. With some abduction and adduction. Inner and outer thigh. Just to make it interesting. So back to the heart rate. When you're in the lower end of your cardio zone, percentage-wise, you're burning more fat. 70 to 80% of the calories you're burning are fat calories, because your body has time to metabolize that fat. When you're at the high end, it just doesn't have time to metabolize the fat. There you go. Drive it up. Out. Open. Down. Drive through your heels. Open the knees. Close the knees, hips down. Drive it up. Close. And so at the higher end of the cardio zone, or if you were a bit up above your next 85% of the next heart, you're burning stored energy that your muscles have for emergencies. Fight or flight. They don't last long, those stores. Probably if you remember sprinting as a child. You run out of speed fairly quickly because of that. Here we go, chest press. Because those muscles have stored energy, but they don't store an infinite amount of energy. It's a very finite amount of energy. It gets burned up quick. So, when you're at that higher zone, a lot of the work energy comes from that store versus that. And those muscles can hang on to that sore energy all they want, or whenever you might need it. You don't want to hang on to the fat, is that correct? That's correct, right ladies? You want to burn the fat. Alright, here we go. Drive it up, knees out, close, and down. Come up, out. You're squeezing the bum in here, you should feel that. Hips are driving way up. I I love metabolic conditioning workouts because one, they have a lot of variety, they're fun, you don't get bored. Two, super effective. Well, that's the number one reason, really. A lot getting done here in this 40 minutes, that's for sure. Ready for a rest? I am. Um, okay. How are we going to put these together? So it's going to look like both upper and lower movement at the same time. Heels are in, 
So press and down. Ready? Here we go. Press it. No, you're not doing the knees. Out and in. Just doing the blue bridge. Out the top here, squeeze the bum. With me. Oh, busy breathing over here. Check what we've got coming up next. Oh, that one. We'll say one more. Come on, push it. Ooh. And down. All right, what should we do for cardio? Any ideas? You know I do. What am I? What was I thinking when I made this work? Because a lot of stuff that is hard for me to work on two rock climbers. I'm going to take my feet off my mat because these tear up my mat. Maybe they do yours too. Hands right under your shoulders. Up in a plank. Crunching the knees. Come on. You can walk this. You can run it. If you're just starting out, knees back, but on the ground. Go on that crunch. Hands are tight. Just you just work. Remember we talked about that isometric briefly? That hold on the muscle group. That's what's going on here. After those presses. So this is hard. It's kind of a finisher here. Really, really burn out the muscles. Make them work. In 40 seconds. It's a long time. For a mountain climber, so if you need a rest, come down to your knees. And bounce up. I told you that a little late tonight. Oh, deep breath. Okay. Let's set up this next one. It's going to be this one arm up in a high plank. Okay. I'm going to take an elbow here. Put your balance. To crunch down, twist, and up. Pull the abs tight, and up. Going in five seconds. Just set yourself up. Same arm and leg. Leg is out, arm is up. Here we go. Twist it down, way up. Try and bring that elbow into that space between your elbow and your thigh. And then point it way up at the ceiling. Lots going on here. Great exercise. I haven't done this one in my videos in a while. It's going to be a quick transition. The other side, okay? Get ready. One more here. And one arm down, one leg back. Now I am facing away from you. I try not to do that. But because we don't have any rest here, I'm going to need to keep going with this peripheral heart action work. And this is a little different than the other circuits that we did. Because we are working up and lower at the same time a little bit. Wanted to give you some good out focus in here. So this last one is here towards that. I don't see my clock. <laughs> I'm guessing here where are we? There it is. Okay, switching it up. Like that. Here we go. Down and up. Pull the tummy tight. Pull that belly button spine right here. Keep it nice and tight as the arm goes up. Oops. Put your balance. Show you, this is a balance move. I should put this in one of my balance videos. I just had that brilliant idea. Almost done. So one more here, and then I'll transition to the other side. Side and twist, elbow under, elbow up. So this side's challenging on my back, to be honest. If my form looks a little off, it very well may be. Oh my balance. I am getting this fixed though. So that is good. Flip on over. I'm not really combining it, it's not any way you can combine this. 
we want to take this into a bicycle twist. We want to go on combination, compound, and move. This is strength. We are not going for cardio here. Knee, elbow, or I'm sorry, knee to shoulder, shoulder to knee. So we're about starting me out. So I see this a lot. Elbow, elbow. What do you think? Shoulder right here. Get much more twist. Naps, obliques. And back as well. It's the opposing muscle group. We need to work it. Almost done. Come on. Got a cardio blast. I'm wondering what the heck that's going to be, right? Alright, we are going to flip it over. Catch your breath. This is a plank jack. If you want to do a high impact, I'm going to show you that right now. Nice flat back. Jump out, jump in. Jump out, jump in. Or tap. This is where I'll be. Just starting out. Tap, knee down. Tap, knee down. Ready? Here we go. Now, abs are tight. Glutes are tight. Hands are up under the shoulders. They're nice and strong. Hips are not up like this. If you feel like you're up like this, I'd rather be down here. You're going to get more core benefit, more glute benefit, and more oblique. And it's your way up here. Okay? Now keep your back nice and flat right here. Shaking, are you shaking? I get 10 seconds more to shake. That's a lovely sound, isn't it? Three beats means the timer is done. All right, let's bring it right on down to your toes. Hands are holding your knees like your head. Just gonna push up on our forearms. Let your abs go blah here. Just let them hang and holding them tight. Now we want to just let them relax, blood flow. Come down to the mat again. Bend the knee. Grab the foot if you can. Back through your pant leg, back your shoe, sock, whatever you can get a hold of. Stretch in the front of the leg. I'm being heavy. Other side. Here we go. It's good. That was the goal, right? Not complaining. I'm not complaining. I rarely complain at the end of a workout. Let's come up on our hands and our knees. Let's put the spot right there on the mat. Bend your back. Maybe you do too. Flatten. Let's round it again. Pull those hips. Towards your chin, look at your knees. Round across the shoulder blades as well here. Stretching the back. And then flat back. Good. Okay, we're gonna take one arm and palm up between the arm and the leg. And come down here, stretching the shoulder and back. This is a nice stretch. You feel good. Excellent. Okay. Come on up. Stay on the other side. Get that arm where it's comfortable. You can put a little bit of pressure. Bring the body weight down. And then stretch up across your back. Come on up. Toes are together. Knees out. As far as you can, that's comfortable. I'm going to rock back here. Feel those inner thighs start to stretch. Arms high over your head. Come down to where you're comfortable. Flexibility is a very, very personal thing. Some people are flexible. Some people like me, not so flexible. But okay. so wherever you're at, if you feel the stretch, that's what matters. Prayer hands, I'm bring behind my head. I position my elbows so I'm a good stretch in the back of my arm. Feel that tricep work here. Right on up. Come on to your bum. Put our legs out. I want you to reach and round. I want you to feel this in the back of your leg here. I want to feel it in your lower back as well. Drop your shoulders. Relax your neck. Stretch in the back of the legs. Deep breaths. 
So your muscles need oxygen to work. They also need oxygen to recover. And that oxygenated blood helps them heal. That's what you do when you do the strength work is you make little tears in those muscles. Come down, let's twist across the knee. And so they go, oh wow, crap, we don't want that to happen again. We need to heal a little stronger. So, for the next couple days, they're going to heal and make themselves a little stronger because they're working, working to not have that happen again, right? So that's how you get stronger and stronger. So the next time, you may be able to do a rep or two more. The time after there, a rep or two more. The key is, let's roll forward. The key is the rest part, okay? So you don't want to be doing hardcore strength every day. I mix it up on this channel with the cardio strength or cardio strength. So the combination you go workout to workout is not going to impact the muscles in the exact same way as the workout before. So I want you to keep an eye on that. I'm glad you joined me today. I hope you had a good workout. I know I certainly did. I'll see you next time. Bye.